first of all, I'd like to have our audience understand what you guys do. So Carol, if you can start uh, and just explain what the UNPRI is and how it works exactly so we have context. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. And hi, everyone. Really excited to be with you here today amongst such a group of committed people uh, looking to accelerate action on climate transition. Uh, my name is Carol Yepesen. I head up U.S. Signatory Relations for the PRI, the UN Principles for Responsible Investment. Uh, for those of you who are not already familiar with the PRI, uh, we are the world's largest investor network uh, around responsible investment. Uh, so we work together um, with a network of what is now over 5,000 signatories globally, over uh, uh, more than 100 countries uh, collectively committed uh, to incorporating material, environmental, social, and governance factors into their investment decision-making and stewardship practices. Uh, we were founded back in 2006 uh, by the UN Secretary General Kofi Annan, together with a group of about 100 uh, investors at the time who were looking to embed sustainability practices into the capital markets. Um, I was brought on board to the PRI back in 2015. Uh, at the time, we had about 200 uh, U.S. signatories uh, comprised of asset owners uh, like public pension funds, endowments, foundations, insurance companies, uh, investment managers, and service providers. Uh, today, we have over 1,100 signatories in the U.S., uh, so it's, it's been a very exciting uh, seven and a half years. <laughs> What exactly do you explain what you invest in? And you said these are partnerships. So how does that, how do those work? Yeah, so we're non for profit, we're nonpartisan. Uh, we don't invest ourselves as an organization. Uh, we work together with our signatories um, across multiple different capacities. We help uh, educate them. Uh, on the material significance of ESG issues. That's to say how ESG issues affect the performance, uh, corporate financial performance of the companies that they're invested in, as well as uh, systemic uh, risk, how ESG factors impact uh, the overall economies in which we invest. Um, and then once they understand kind of the materiality aspect, we work together with them um, alongside other investors, I should say, because it's not, so, not only learning from the PRI, but really bringing investors together to share challenges, share best practices, and learn from each other uh, on what to do with it, how to incorporate these factors really across uh, their, their entire portfolios. So it's not something that we're just talking about um, publicly traded equities, private equity. Uh, we believe that ESG issues can be incorporated um, across the entire capital structure. Um, and yeah, and we work with our investors to help them do that. Perfect. Um, Jens, over to you. Can you explain the, uh, your foundation and the alliance and exactly how it works, the partnerships you build? Yeah, so um, yeah, uh, my name is uh, Jens Nielsen. I'm the CEO of World Climate Foundation. I'm based in Copenhagen uh, in Denmark, and it's also a great pleasure to, to be here uh, in, in Sun Valley. Uh, so uh, we created um, World Climate Limited was the name then back in 2010 uh, to, uh, to, to, to make a platform for business and finance uh, to uh, give their voice uh, in the annual climate negotiations. So at that time, um, business and finance were kind of outside of the equation, I would say. Uh, and uh, we, um, we did a um, uh, first event, the World Climate Summit in Cancun, and actually uh, Amy Christensen was a, a key partner then and is also a key collaborator now. In, in what we do, um, and um, so um, yeah, have focused very much on getting um, uh, business and finance integrated in the uh, in the climate negotiations. In, in 2020, we um, uh, we changed the organization to a not-for-profit foundation, uh, also to uh, to work across sectors to integrate um, governments and philanthropies, uh, the the NGO sector in our work. Um, and uh, the things that um, I think we are most known for uh, is our investment coalitions. Uh, so in, uh, in 2019, together with the Danish government, um, uh, we had uh, 13 uh, Danish pension funds uh, uh, together with the Danish prime minister to uh, commit um, 55 billion US dollars to invest in, in climate and clean energy before 2030. We've been tracked every year. 
uh, two years later in Glasgow at uh, COP26, uh, we increased that to 130 billion US dollars from 42 Nordic pension funds and uh, had the pleasure of seven the heads of states, uh, prime ministers, all the Nordic ones, to announce that uh, at COP26 in Glasgow. And of course, we hope to do something this year uh, at, uh, at the COP28 in Dubai, and uh, we'll hope to double that amount. So how do these partnerships, how are they structured, and how does the way they're structured, and who you, how do you choose to, how do you bring them, who do you choose to put in those partnerships? How are you choosing who's part of it? And how are they structured? Yeah, so uh, we, we focus primarily in making a, a change before 2030 or over the next uh, 10 years. So, and, uh, uh, so, so we are mainly interested in, in, in changing the economy as it is to a, uh, a eventually a net zero economy, but a low carbon economy to begin with. And um, uh, so if I answer your second question first, so the partners we choose to work with are, are those who have the experience uh, to, uh, in investing uh, because we are investing in, in solutions that are here now primarily and it's uh, the partners that are uh, willing to stick their head out and uh, want, still wants to be leaders uh, over the next uh, 10, 20, 30 years. And, um, and thirdly, we also uh, work with partners that, that can think of impact beyond the bottom line. Those, I would say, are the three primary criteria. And the, um, the partnerships we create um, uh, is, uh, I would say, in the bigger picture of things, uh, we, we try to create, I would say, small speedboats uh, that can act as an example and create a change now. And uh, what we found is that um, often you need to create a kind of uh, an ambition loop uh, is kind of the, tech, uh, the technical word. So uh, get the different sectors to agree to work together. Hmm. So for example, the, the 55 billion or the 130 billion uh, that is committed by the, the, the Nordic pension funds, that's committed under the condition that the governments create the right framework conditions for them to fulfill their fiduciary duties so they can basically earn a, a decent profit uh, to the pensionist. Uh, and at the same time, the government, they go in and uh, promise those framework conditions if they will commit uh, to fund uh, the change to a, a net zero economy. So it's that uh, uh, public-private partnership that we are working with. And, uh, and, and then it, it follows also so, sort of kind, kind of uh, a set number of rules. They have to come forward with a commitment and, on how much they think they, they they can invest, and I can say in the case of the Nordic Pension Funds, it's about 10% of the total balance in 2030. Uh, and then they report on that every year, so there is a, a tracking mechanism. Uh, and then um, they, they also meet to share best practice, uh, because we've learned that, that uh, they can actually learn a lot from each other. The Danish Pension Funds have invested a lot in solar and wind. The Swedish Pension Funds have, have invested a lot in ESG, direct investments. And, so there, there's a lot of things you can, you can, where you can nurture the knowledge sharing. Carol, you talked about uh, sharing best practices also. So can you give some examples of situations from the PRI where you know, which parties had developed some particularly successful strategies and then how those strategies were shared? And, and are they shared with everybody in PRI or are they just shared with a few people? Yeah, yeah. I mean, our signatories uh, collectively uh, manage over $121 trillion, which is over half of the world's investable assets. So it's a powerful force for change. Um, so they come to us, you know, the commonality is that signatories come to us because they've recognized that ESG issues inclusive of climate transition um, are material to the investment performance of the companies that they're investing in. They're material to the investment performance of their overall portfolios and economies. And so, uh, you know, they want to learn really how to do this effectively. Uh, and that includes, of course, learning from each other, as you mentioned. Um, so they come to us and they s sign up uh, to an aspirational set of uh, six principles, hence the principles for responsible investment. It's six principles that essentially represent best practices in responsible investment. Um, so everything that we do together with our signatories at the PRI is, is really collaborative. 
Uh, so, for example, uh, we come out with quite a bit of uh, research and content each year, guidelines and publications. So, for example, how to think about and integrate ESG in the context of a private equity portfolio, how to integrate it into the due, due diligence that you're doing of managers if you're a NASA owner. Um, the way that typically works is that we'll bring together uh, a working group of signatories uh, that have expertise and background in that matter. Um, they will uh, work together to kind of define the scope of the project. Generally speaking, our publications are comprised of a number of case studies that really um, make very tangible uh, the how-to, what works, what doesn't, et cetera. Uh, we also serve as a platform. Uh, we organize an annual conference. Uh, this year it will be taking place in October in Tokyo, but typically we have it in September, where we bring together uh, over a thousand signatories each year um, to uh, convene them, share best practices, have small group and, and big group conversations. Uh, we do a number of consultations. Is there uh, a particular best practice that you think that they, uh, just to manage time here a bit, mm -hmm. is yeah. there a particular best practice that, that you think has been particularly effective that maybe we can learn from? especially in this context of accelerating uh, and scaling. Yeah, so one of the big topics right now uh, that signatories are sharing best practices on um, are around net zero commitments that have been made. So a lot of companies out there, a lot of investors have made commitments to um, uh, achieve a net zero portfolio, typically by 2050. For some of them, it's earlier. Uh, but now they're working through the very difficult challenge of you know, how to implement that, how to get there. Um, so you know, we're involved with a number of issue, initiatives like the Net Zero Asset Owners Alliance, there's an Asset Managers Initiative, et cetera, um, where you know, they help set a framework uh, for how to think about that, how to do that, what does net zero actually mean. Uh, in practice, um, what, are the, what are the tangible strategies for how to do that? Um, so we have convened a number of events where, where investors will, will um, you know, talk through what they're doing, the challenges they've experienced, and what's worked for them. Cool. Yeah. Um, we have about a minute and a half left. Um, Jens, I, I want to talk about what maybe we can learn in the United States from the partnerships that you've been doing in um, Denmark and, and the Nordics and the, and the UK, for example, especially in this context, again, of speed and scale, right? We need, to, we need to accelerate all of this and scale it up real quick. So what have you learned from the partnerships that you've been developing and the best practices that you're seeing them execute to help? What, what can we learn from you, from them? Um, I, I think... Um uh, the institutional investors, institutional investors in, in the U.S. can uh, can learn from the, the Nordic and U.K. investors uh, in terms of going uh, from being very local to being very global uh, as a, and act as an industry. Uh, so you will see uh, Danish pension funds today investing in Texas, in California, in Taiwan. Uh, and uh, as, I, as I, I think I said that too yesterday, I think maybe Nordic uh, pension funds are investing more in the Inflation Reduction Act than uh, U.S. pension funds, wow. but it needs to be proven. Um, and then I think uh, they, uh, they can learn from this public-private interaction and creating these ambition loops and, and create plans to, to make a systemic change. And then, of course, there's a lot of, of best practice to learn from each other. So cool. those would be the three areas. Well, we are out of time, but one thing I just want to bullet point is you said uh, earlier that they have to report and there is accountability on yes. these commitments, and that's a big key to it. So please join me in thanking Carol and Jens uh, for our uh, conversation today, and I hope you learned a lot. Thank you so much. Enjoy the afternoon.